pleasure of speaking with two of the top critical material experts and rare earth experts in the world, Jack Lipton and Christopher Ecclestone. How are you both today? Very well. Thank Good. you. For Thank you. Thank you for doing this last minute interview with me. Um, I was so surprised by how major media was picking up this story. Um, this morning's Globe and Mail, China smearing rare earth miners report alleges. And I found the entire theory behind it so preposterous. I thought I would get you both on the telephone and see what you think, see if you agree with me or disagree with me. Who would like to go first? Christopher. I must say I totally agree with you. Um, it is it's beyond preposterous. It's, it's definitely fake news, dare we say it. Um, because it just doesn't make any sense, mainly because the Chinese structure is enormous and there are a few rare earth companies of, of consequence out there. And while the articles mention Linus, the other two companies that are mentioned in dispatches are frankly below the Chinese radar screen. So I don't think the Chinese would be actually expending any effort trying to sabotage these companies. And Jack, what are your thoughts? I agree with, with Christopher that this is beyond preposterous. One thing, Linus is located in a nation, Malaysia, which is one third ethnic Chinese. It, you can walk from that nation to Singapore, which is 100% ethnic Chinese. And it is the easiest thing in the world. You don't need electronics. You take the Chinese window washer at the office of Linus Malaysia, and he photographs, reads, whatever cuts into the phone line, they can know everything they need to know about Linus. This is silly. And as Christopher said, why hack Appia? Why hack USA Rare Earths? It, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. My opinion is that the Global Times, the, the mouthpiece of the Chinese army, will tomorrow have a headline, uh, American imperialist hack Chinese rare earth industry, which I would believe much more than this story. So I have read the stories from multiple out outlets, media outlets, mm -hmm. and um, it seems to me that what has happened is this Virg Virginia based Mandiant Inc, um, which is basically, it says here, uh, uh, founded by former US government security experts have told um, these companies that uh, they're the victims of a social media hacking, which of course, I only just want to clarify, is a specific type of hacking um, called Dragon Bridge, which I find to be an equally preposterous media name to uh, claim the Chinese are behind, because I am absolutely certain that if the Chinese were behind a social media attack, they wouldn't give it the name Dragon Bridge. Christopher, I just have so many additional comments I'd like to make. Please jump in and clarify your perspective on this. It's beyond beyond belief, the whole thing, as to why, um, you, why anyone would want to hack Appian's, Appian's um, Twitter account to do what with it. Um, is it I, don't, I don't know whether it's to drive up the price, to drive down the price, um, sabotage their social media image, which is not very high. I don't even know how many followers Appia has, but I can't imagine it's in the tens of thousands. Um, it's it, it's sort of almost like you know her whatever the model was that said she didn't get out of bed for less than ten thousand a day. I don't think the Chinese would get out of bed for less than ten thousand Twitter followers. Um, and certainly like, these companies don't qualify. One of them is not even listed. Um, so it's it's not even a ramp. Um, it's it's quite it's quite surprising. And of course, Jack, would you like to add to this? Yes, you you know uh, they're all three listed, but USA Rare Earths in a roundabout way. You can buy Texas Mineral Resources uh, shares, and, and that that is uh, their only asset is the eighty percent. Uh, the, of round top their deposit owned by USA Rare Earths. But you know what this does? This, if I were a publicist, I would say, you know, this is a great way to emphasize the only ones the Chinese are hacking must be the best ones. Uh, this is demonstrably not true, 
But this is this is what I would do if I were a publicist whose company was closing soon, or or the police were already at the door, or the sheriff, or something. Uh, this is very poor judgment if it's intended to promote these companies. Okay, that that's my opinion. Now. I can tell you, I've had the privilege of speaking with uh, management from Appia Rare Earths and uh, Uranium, and uh, I do believe that they have been broadsided by all of this PR and the uh, questions that they're getting. Um, it says here, additionally, that Mandiant said, came from Dragon Bridge, blasted out negative commentaries attempting to stir up public contempt. My concern here, Jack, and I'm throw this back at you from a geopolitical perspective, is that what this PR campaign has done, because I don't see any factual data to support that this actually has taken place, mm -hmm. um, you know, this alleged campaign is, an, is actually doing the opposite. It's stirring up contempt for the Chinese, you know, causing people to have this panic attack that we require, you know, a sustainability initiative ASAP. So why are we re redirecting this? I know you guys have wanted to talk more about uh, Appia and USA Rare Earths, but I want to throw you, you know, under the, the Linus bus, Jack, because why would the Americans be all focused on the Australian play? Uh does it Linus, have to do with their recent uh, Department of Defense uh, yes. $120 million announcement? Could this be part of the game? Yes. And of course, the, everybody out there, these are all hypotheses. This is just a uh, yeah. discussion among there are experts. Grapes. There are grapes in evidence. Oh, no question. Uh, the, in the U.S., I have never seen such uh, hostility uh, in, in, the, in, in the rare earth industry, which you know, I know quite well. And there's open hostility to the Defense Department, which which normally you suck up to and lick, okay? Because you're hoping you're hoping that some of that money will drop off. But in this case, after all this stuff about buy American, reshore, et cetera, suddenly the award for developing a the a modern heavy wear of separation, a heavy wear of capable separation system goes to a foreign country, Australia. And, and so the, the Americans who are hoping to get this award are quite furious, they really are. This may be, this may be involved. And so everybody's on a hate Linus uh, campaign. I mean, I've heard some, and it's amazing to me, uh, as, as uh, some people may know, I, I don't think that Linus was particularly the best choice for this project, but I understand that the Defense Department said, geez, who is in the business and making money processing rare earths? So you only have one, one entrant in that contest, just one outside of uh, the People's Republic of China. So they said, okay, that's the obvious choice. To them it was. But it negated all the anti-Chinese crap going on in the U.S. federal government, which loves to blame China for its own failings. So the, I think you're right, Tracy. This has to do not not with rare earths, but with with the anti-Chinese bias. And so they're they're saying we have opened a path for the Chinese to get into this critical material rare earths, whatever those are, and and that is that's probably what's going on here. That that's why they did this. Okay, so they can profit from the anti-Chinese bias. And Linus is a great whipping boy because they're not, they're not gonna to respond to this. And I, the I, Twitter examples that they currently have <laughs> have been consistent against Linus ever mm -hmm. since they opened their Malaysian plant. Um, Christopher, I don't know if you wanna add anything to this because I'm just, it occurred to me, Jack, while you were speaking, the publicist, uh, this brilliant publicist who's riding off the anti-Chinese sentiment has selected an Australian, a Canadian, and an American company. And that shows us who's to benefit. Christopher, any comments on this? No, I, I'd agree. I, I'd agree totally with Jack. It, you don't look at what the, the, 
front part of the, the story is you look what is behind it. And quite clearly there's a get Linus, uh, a get the Chinese, um, get everyone except whoever the mystery party is that has is, uh, is, is fanned these, these flames. Um, but it's been done in such a ham-fisted way that I think it's blowing up. Um, it's blowing up all over them. And uh, the, the media really need to have pushed back. I mean, you're pushing back here, we're pushing back. But um, for major news organs to pick up this story, which is quite obviously space junk, um, it's just, it just shows the low standards of, um, of, of uh, uh, vetting in the major wire uh, organizations. Well, gentlemen, I'd like to thank you both. I'd like to encourage everybody out there in Investor Intel land to do your due diligence. And, you know, I don't like to support the concept of fake news, um, but I think there's plenty of evidence in this particular headline story that this didn't actually exist. Anyone want to add anything or do you agree yeah, with me? You know, I, you vote, know, I, vote fake, I vote fake news fake on this fake one. News. And I, I want to know. Here's an interesting Let's find point. out who this publicist is because uh, they're dangerous. I, I think the fact that they didn't go after MP materials is a tell here. Uh, that this was an anti-Chinese uh, biased uh, attack, so to speak. And I just wonder... I'm, I'm going to continue to wonder why they didn't go after MP. And it was mentioned in one article I saw, they said, you know, MP is in bed with Shanghai resources of China, yet they weren't mentioned. Uh, you know, more, more to think about, said Hercule Poirot as he went for breakfast. <laughs>